This is a Macintosh. And yes, as you probably already know if you saw my pickup video, I am now the proud owner of this original Macintosh from 1984, the Macintosh 128K. Here it is in the original bag complete with startup disks and peripherals. Now this was before ADB was developed, so the keyboard connects into this phone jack looking port. The mouse port uses a DE9 connector, and interestingly the hard drive connects into the floppy drive port. Now although functional, my 128 was not displaying any picture, but since I also picked up a working 512K model, I simply swapped the analog boards and that fixed the issue, but obviously leaves my 512 without picture now. It's a temporary fix, and when I have more time, I'll try to determine the actual cause of the issue, which I suspect is the flyback. So last night I opened up the 512K to remove that analog board, and I filmed it in case anyone was curious on how you open one of these. Uh, basically, there's five Torx screws holding it together, two on the bottom, two underneath the handle, which will require a long screwdriver, and one under the battery compartment. Now you'll need a Torx TT15 size bit, and then once you get it unscrewed, you can separate it. Now you might need to give it a little bit of force, but it should come apart relatively easy. If you're really struggling, then it probably means you forgot to remove the screw under the battery cover, like I did the first time. Yeah, I have my blonde moments. Well anyway, here's an inside look at the computer. To remove the motherboard, just disconnect two cables, one from the floppy disk drive and one from the monitor. Just be careful not to touch that anode cap from the flyback. That'll give you a nice little shock. And once they are disconnected, you can safely remove the motherboard. And as the name suggests, the difference between the 512K and the 128K is the K. Yes, this has 512 kilobytes. But other than that, they use the same chips, same 68,000 Motorola processor. All right, so next step, remove the analog board. You'll want to get an insulated screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, and a thick gauge wire with alligator clips on the ends. And this is basically what you want to do anytime you discharge a CRT monitor. You clip one end to the metal frame to ground it, the other end to your screwdriver, and then you want to make contact with the metal underneath that anode cap. So just kind of drive that screwdriver underneath the cap until you touch it. And then make sure a few times that you are indeed touching that metal. And then once you are 100% sure, more like 150% sure, uh, then you can safely remove the cap. Now to remove the cap, you want to get some pliers and get in there and just pinch it and it should come out with ease. Alright, with the machine safely discharged, we can now touch it anywhere we want, but I probably wouldn't recommend that. Remove the three screws on this side of the analog board and then there'll be a wire that crosses over the back of the CRT. You'll have to remove that as well. Carefully, carefully remove the neck board. If you crack that tube, it's game over. And now we can remove the board. Oh, another screw. Yeah, remove all the screws, Brian. Dumbass. And here we are. A nice usable analog board. Alright, with the analog board installed, let's turn this computer on. So you just heard me flip the switch on the hard drive. I'll give that a few seconds to start up and now I'll flip the switch on the computer. And keep your fingers crossed that it works. Now, to my surprise, I didn't realize this till this morning because, stupid me, I didn't even look at the motherboard of the 128K, but it was actually upgraded to a 512. So, Really didn't even need to go to the trouble, I guess, of switching the analog boards, but still, it is a 128 computer case, and whatever is inside it is working, so that's good enough for me. So here is Mac OS, very early version, version 5.0, 1985 Apple computer. 
And here is the hard drive. Let's look at the contents. I just love looking through old hard drives uh, whenever I find them still working and unformatted. Uh, I don't know. I just get a kick out of looking basically at a screenshot in time, especially from a really early period like this. Sometimes you find stuff that you wish you hadn't, though. Uh, but here we go. Crystal Quest. Awesome game. I did a review of this game for the Apple IIGS. But this was the original platform. And actually, this game has the claim to fame of being the first color Macintosh game. So there you go. And it looks like it takes a little while to start up, even from a hard drive. But this is a pre-SCSI hard drive. It's the hard disk 20. Hence why it plugs into the floppy disk port. Let's see. Mouse button. Start game. Oh yeah. Crystal Quest. Such a classic. Just collect the crystals. And other stuff. And avoid the baddies. Alright, let's see what else we got in here. Actually, there's a games folder. I wonder if there's anything I can recognize. Castle of Urt. Dungeon of Doom. Hangman. I know that one. Mac Football. Poopy? Poopy. Okay. Quest for T-Rex. Radical Castle. Ooh, Shuffle Puck Cafe. No way. Or actually, no, this... I think this is just Shuffle Puck. This is before Shuffle Puck Cafe. Yes, this is the original. There we go. Sweet. Yeah, it's like identical, just without, you know, actually seeing your opponent. Oh yeah, I still got the stuff. Uh, this game just never gets old. I don't know. It's one of those games like Tetris. You can just pick it up and play any time. doesn't matter. Ugh, until that happens. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Let's quit. So many games to see and so little time. Actually, I have all the time in the world. What am I talking about? Well, for the purposes of this review... Rosa Hang. I wonder if that's a company or a person. And I saw Radical Castle. And this I actually am familiar with because Tanara Kuranov, another YouTube reviewer of a lot of Macintosh games, uh, did a review of this game. It looked really cool too. Kind of cryptic, but cool nonetheless. And, wow, this one is really sluggish. I can only imagine playing this on a floppy disk. Jeez. All right, let's play Find the Cursor. Close your eyes. Okay, where is it? Oh, actually, here's the game. Radical Castle. The king appears before you and speaks. Squire... All right, what can I do here? North. <laughs> that was a threatening laugh. <laughs> Little weapons. Swing fist. A miss. Kick foot. A hit to the side. What the hell kind of weapons are these? These aren't weapons. It's using your body. And it looks like there is an arcade directory. Brickles, Iggy Igopolis, Space Bubbles. What the hell kind of arcade names are these? You don't remember Space Bubbles? Oh yeah, I used to play it all the time. That looks promising. Try this. Yep. Typical space shooter. Although, no sound effects. That's 
kind of disappointing. Although, I think this might be like a shareware version or something. Maybe you have to pay for sound. Well, that was uninspiring. Let's see what else we got in there. I still can't get over I actually own an original Macintosh. It's just unbelievable. What luck! Amazing, amazing luck. Mac bugs. Yeah, I mean, you guys know. I mean, I'm not a huge Macintosh fan as much as I am an Apple II guy. Uh, obviously, the Macintosh, in a way, killed the Apple II, but still, I gotta have respect for the computer. I mean, it's still as popular as ever. More popular now than it was at this time, actually. And here's where it all started with Mac bugs. It looks very, very similar to Centipede. Yes, I do believe this is a Centipede clone. Here is zero gravity. Not sure what I'm supposed to do. I probably could read the help. But what's the fun in that? Dance. It's a dancing game. Go to the exit, maybe? Nope, oh, there you go. What the hell am I doing here? Touch the targets. I don't know, am I supposed to touch those? Okay, doesn't sound like a pleasant sound. I'll just stay in the middle and dance. And here is the Dungeon of Doom. Don't you just wish they would make a game called, like, the Dungeon of Happiness or something? The Dungeon of Pink Bunnies. Just doesn't sound as menacing. And it looks like some kind of a RPG adventure game. Let's see if there's any other fun stuff in here. And in case you're curious, you perverts, no, there's no porn on here, surprisingly, but maybe this was before computer porn. Let's open up an old resume instead. I just love opening up old documents, looking at all the outdated references. Microsoft Word on a Macintosh? What madness. Sal James, Del Mar, that's so awesome, that's like 15 minutes from here. Senior software engineering position involving the development of offering technical innovations. You forgot to put a period. Sal, you gotta proofread this stuff, man. BA in mathematics, 1970. Here's an old reference an IBM ATPC. All right, well, that's enough invasion of privacy for today. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the first Macintoshes. As always, thanks for watching.